tilitonta. Ali tuli jalla, tili tuli talla, tili tili. Just need storms, the old feedback, he fets the scrub, he's pulled out for perfect engagement. The storm is breaking down the brood lock. He does have another vortex available. Another feedback. Enough with the acting. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I pulled a Stefano last <laughs> night. And I'm a little bit hungover still. I was out in the town, and now I'm just deciding to sit in my PJs and a cup of tea and cast some StarCraft. That's all the shades were about. Um, but on to serious things. Welcome to the good studio, King of the Hill StarCraft, Heart of the Swarm, Upsy Down tournament that we're doing today. Uh, I'm, of course, Apollo, joined once again with Ada BC. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. I've been better, but I'm ready for uh, StarCraft. Don't you hide your pajama bottoms as well? I'm behind a desk, man. I know you've got them on. I do. It's a pajama Sunday. Um, it's a relaxed, chilled out, sitting in my PJs, ready to watch some StarCraft. So this is day three of the Heart of the Swarm series that you've been watching. Day two, day one uh, was last Sunday and Thursday, and now we're into day three. So coming up to the halfway point and about to cross it here at the Good Studio. And well, what a day we have here. We have our reigning king, Hyun, who is going to be taking on in the first game of the day for GG, who's currently top 50 in the Grandmasters League of Heart of the Swarm. Uh, and straight after that, we're going to be having the Swedish Sasse play. And I'm sure a lot of you are very much so waiting for Sasse to be playing uh, in today's tournament. After that, we have Glon, the 17-year-old American, looking for his shot, his chance, his opportunity to do well here. And then finally, last but not least, we have Polt, going to be playing last in our series today. So a great day. Uh, we've spread $1,000 now already in this series, day two. $500 a day, and we're going to be sending off another $500 today as well. Going to be a good day. Yeah, it's going to be a good day. Uh, you, I think you kind of covered it. I wasn't listening, so I'm, you I'm, never not, to us, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you said. I don't know what to add, but uh, we're keeping the same map pool. Um, we've got both our players ready. I'm going to double check, and then I think we can get, get the show on the road. Is cool. That Sounds good. I mean, so far we've had, uh, well, Grubby's actually the leading player within the series with three streaks in terms of uh, who's had the longest reign as king. Uh, and in second place, actually, goes to user and Hyun tied. But is Hyun going to change that now? Because if he wins this first game, he will go on to three wins uh, in a row and equal Grubby's, if not looking to beat it. So uh, I hear the game loading. We're going to jump into game number one right away here. It's going to be for GG. Taking on our reigning king, Hyun, who's only in Masters. But do not let that trick <laughs> you. He's good. He showed yesterday. Well, not yesterday, but our, our previous, previous day, which was, in fact, not yesterday. But he's good. Yeah. And it's funny because everyone's kind of come to the conclusion Zerg is uh, the weakest in HOTS right now. But, I mean, Violet just all killed FXO in the GSTL, and Hyun here has been doing fine. Ghost User did well, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, Hyun beat Ghost User 2-0 easily, beat Supernova 2-0 easily, and we're about to find out if that story can continue here against his first opponent of the day. Down here, playing for Millennium, and of course, it's 4GG. Formerly OGS, uh, the 4GG, and is 23 years old, last name Park, Jisoo Park, at for GG1 on Twitter if you want to follow him and his opponent, our king, it is of course Quantix Hyun on a two game streak as you can see. 25 years old, Twitter is at Quantic Hyun and his name is Ko Seok Hyun. Excuse my Korean. And so far, he's won 250 bucks here from us. Yeah, 250 bucks for for two games in a row. Uh, looking to get up, it's 125 dollars per win. 
So that's 250. Could be going up to equal Grubby today with $375 if he's able to beat out Millennium's 4GG. And I've watched 4GG stream a lot out of BC, and uh, it's, uh, he's, he's pretty good at the moment. He's playing a ton of Heart of the Swarm. I think he's come up to 600 games now already, and that's a lot. He's uh, roughly like 350 wins, 250 losses um, around there. Top 50 Grandmaster compared to Hyun, who recently just requalified into Code A, uh, Code S, sorry. Uh, having won his Code A game, he's actively scouting around here, checking for any proxy stuff. Because on this map, um, it's actually kind of difficult to get overlords fast to scout. I mean, you've got one that goes straight up there, but is he going to see a proxy barracks or command center anytime soon? Not really. So that's why you kind of have to drone scout on this map in fear of proxy barracks, but more so recently in fear of reapers. But as that, excuse me, drone gets into uh, the main base of Hyun, he actually finds out that it's not going to be anything aggressive really, it's just going to be a simple command center first. Yeah, kind of becoming increasingly standard as players start to uh, pull a little bit away from doing the, the, the proxy reaper, which was definitely the go-to build for a little while here in HOTS. It was. Um, it has been shut down a little bit more as of recent, and Hyun has taken a relatively early gas there upon seeing this command center first. He's going to get a gas scout as well. Uh, it's a, a normal time gas scout here. Not going to see a super fast third come out from 4GG because he will have a decently timed factory here. And uh, from what I've seen on his stream, he actually does like mech a lot. Um, you know, the, the, with the Hellions and Hellbats, Mines, Tanks. And then going straight over into decently upgraded Vikings because they now share the upgrades with, or the plating upgrade with vehicles. Which makes the transition a little bit smoother so you don't just get wiped out easily. Um... In the later stages when you do make that switch. But Hyun is a player that very much so likes his aggression. Ling, Bane, Ling, Heavy. Um, I'm pretty sure if I'm going to choose how he's going to play in this game from predictions. We're going to see Mutalist play. Ling, Bane, Ling, Muter I think. And some very, very solid play going over to Ultralist pretty fast I feel. But we'll see if he even gets to that point in the game. He's mining that gas. He's gone over 100, and it looks like we're going to be seeing an early Roach Warren down here by the looks of it, if he's not going to get that speed. And he's going to be putting a bit of pressure on, so there's the Roach Warren coming down, and upon seeing Command Center first, he's going to be looking to build up to 8 to 10 Roaches here, put the pressure on immediately, and we'll see if 4GG can defend this. He will have Hellions out pretty fast here, um, the bar and he also, uh, the way that 4GG likes to play, is he does go react to Hellion into Cloak Banshee. So he will have Banshees out, but how much... Will he have out? Maybe one by the time the roaches get there. As we do have a little bit of laggy there as it does fix itself. Three overlords at once and we're about to find out if this is going to work. Hyun scouts his opponent, sees no bunker early. Usually you do get a bunker quite early here, but he has got this factory coming out. And Starput should be made immediately here and switching over that barracks to build a tech lab as well. And six roaches are on the way, seven. And every little bit of minerals he's going to get, he's going to throw into more and more roaches. So going up to nine. And it looks like Todd's speaking to you, who's <laughs> not on busy, you amateur observer. Wait, what do you mean? He's, he's casting French. Oh, yeah. Amateur casting. I, I did leave my playing settings on, though, so my hotkeys are all messed up. But Aww. that's fine. All right, roaches are on their way across. Now we're going to see if this is going to work as... The Star Boy is going to try and get down. He may have a Banshee out, but there's no bunker. There's a single Marine because he got such a fast gas early. Well, not such a fast gas, but he switched over for the reactor so early on. And he will get the kind of quickest scout you can get if he goes through the middle. But he's, well, is he, gonna, he should be checking his Zelnaga Tower here, surely. He sees it. And now the Banshee's on its way. He's going to have to sacrifice that. He's going to have to lift up and get out of there. Try and defend in his main base for now. Behind this, we have drones being built, and most likely a third base going to go down very shortly here for Hyun. And 4GG's on the back foot already here out of BC. Yeah, I mean, we saw this uh, earlier. These roach timings are are very, very strong, and we'll see how much damage can get done. But 4GG did manage to get it with all his SCVs, but it's just how many will he lose here? Well, he's going to lose a lot. That Banshee's not quite ready yet. All the SCVs are coming down and they're all going to have to fight here. And he's going to lose so much. And there's a layer down, there's drones coming down. And this is exactly the same way that Hyun beat out Supernova as well in, in the other day series. And look at the amount of SCVs going down. He's down to 15, 14 already. And remember, there's a bunch of drones behind this. He's down to 12 SCVs. And the biggest point to, to put out here, usually when you see Terran players recover, is when they have three command centers, and he doesn't have that. He's only on two. He only has two sets of orbitals. Down to 12. 
He will have a 4GG, will have a small window here to do counter damage back, because he does have a lot of Hellions and a Banshee out, but with Roaches and additional Queens being made, we'll see how much damage can actually be done. There is going to be Cloak, but Lair's about to finish as well, which means he can build an Overseer for that. And he's going to have to deal almost equal damage here, from what he was uh, just received. He should be able to do some. Uh, actually, more Roaches do start to pop out now to help defense, so these Hellions uh, shouldn't be able to do too much. Uh, it's the Banshee that's going to be the problem, is... The Overseer needs to be made immediately, and it does. And he's going to pick off one Queen, potentially another, and these Hellions do get in there. So he is going to be trading off a lot of drones here compared to the SUVs he did initially lose. But how many is he actually going to get? Only three wow, so far. Wow, only three. Five Hellions in the main mineral line, and he only manages to get that. Five, six, and that's it. That's the end of it. Six, and there are a couple more... Banshee's coming in though, so they will keep on going down. He actually, his... he killed every queen. He did. He did indeed. And where are these drones going? Well, I guess he's doing the damage necessary I to kind of get is. back into this game. And the thing is now though, the, 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 it's going to swing over again. Because the roaches are going across and the banshees are aggressive. There is a marauder to be made. There's still no bunker down. Another banshee's going to be made. A banshee marauder is going to be quite difficult to deal with. Another queen's going to go down. And what a hectic game we're actually starting off with here today. The Spore Crawlers do finish. The Roaches do make their way across. The Banshees avoid them. Is there Spores in the main? Yes, there is. So it looks like Hyun will start to stabilize. But is he going to be able to defend this? We have a Banshee and a Marauder. And a single two Hellions now. And more SCVs are going to die here. Absolutely needs to go and target them down. 34 supply to 43. And what a back and forth game. This is re Nothing's even stabilizing this game from the get-go. It's just a slug fight. There's more SCVs, more mules to go down. Nine SCVs to 20, and that's still really, really bad here for 4GG. And he's not mining with those SCVs either, and more are going to go down. And it looks like these Banshees are finally pushed away. Those Queens will keep on popping out, and a Queen will be able to bring that down. More and more SCVs will fall here. What a... <laughs> what a game! What a scrappy, no gloves, nose is bleeding game we have here. And it looks like it's about to stop now, all this harassment, or... Four Banshees in total, two Queens out. Spore Crawlers are in good position. A lot of Lava Injects have been missed, as you can see he's running out of Lava. And he's about to have another attack here for GG. Changelings are going to spot this. Four ban that's a scary sight, that is. And, Look. uh, he's also not making new SCVs, so... Yeah. He's kind of got to get it done here. And well, two queens and a spore crawler. As you said, no SCVs being made. This is it. Three queens. One going down. Oh, Transfuse actually keeps that alive, so it does stay alive for a lot longer. Two Banshees remaining, but the queens are starting to fall. The, ob the Overseer just giving it vision, and he can't break through here as we looked at that. And game one goes over to Hyoma. A scrappy game one there. And, well, the remaining king looks like he could be going the distance here if he picks up the next map. Yeah, he looked good there, played well, uh, remained calm. It's a kind of scary thing when you have to run all your drones away, and it seemed like maybe he was making the wrong choice, but it 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 worked out quite quite well for him. It's kind of interesting, didn't see any Widow Mines there, and Widow Mines are something that, uh, mm. I mean, they can be very hard to use against Roaches when it pops, but then when you're constantly moving back and forth with, with units, you'll actually be able to kill quite a lot there so uh yeah i've seen a couple of terran players uh use uh widow mines straight away instead of hellions but the problem with that is you don't get any scouting information because they are there to be put under the ground straight away so uh you know two different styles hellions do get you scouting information they are also good against ling banelings and so on but as you said widow mines can be useful but if for G i mean if you're smart about it you can just put one roach over the widow mine per time and, yeah exactly you know just kind of put that away so